I quickly realized that this boat was not designed to be motorboated. I've always wanted a Corvette boat, which is one made by Malibu. They started in 1997 and made a limited run of, I think, 125 for the first generation. They used a Callaway LT1 that was modified and marinized, but the problem was that it was known for being horrendously unreliable. And I even talked to one of the Callaway engineers and he said, yeah, here was the design flaw and essentially this is why they keep popping motors. And I'm like, I, the last thing I wanna do is buy an unreliable boat because they're already a headache enough. They say the acronym for boat is bring on another thousand and I did not want this to become a thorn in my side. So as much as I prefer the styling of the original one, I started to seek out the second gen one which was built in 2008. They built 50 of them, and it was based on the Corvette C6 Z06. And it actually uses a LS7 motor, essentially the exact same engine that comes out of a Z06, 505 horsepower, and all the seats are Corvette seats, Corvette dash, steering wheel. It's 90% uh, of them are red, of course, and it has a matching custom-made trailer that uses Z06 wheels. So I started to do some searching. And when I buy any vehicle for myself, I get incredibly nerdy about it. So I decided to build a database of these and try to find every possible one I could, put the serial numbers in order, try to determine pricing trends for the last five years or so. And I probably found about 15 out of the 50 because probably the other 35 got parked in Corvette collectors warehouses next to their collector's edition 1993 Corvette and their collector's edition 1994 and their limited edition 1995 and their pace car edition and their anniversary edition and their other anniversary edition and their million limited production Corvettes that they own. In all the uh, internet sleuthing I did, I found this what looked to be an old ad for this Corvette boat in Washington. And the guy was asking like 60 grand. Oh, call them up and see if it's still for sale. It's kind of a high price, but whatever. There's a phone number on the ad and I'll call him up. So I rang him up, he answered, and I said, hey, I'm calling about this old ad I found with your Corvette boat, is, is it still available? And he goes, yeah, I was actually you know, thinking about selling it. Shortly after that phone call, I found that he had recently just relisted it for 40,000 bucks. So I was like, all right, that's right up my alley. We negotiated and I said, as much as you shouldn't play your cards in shrewd negotiations, I uh, did my best to hold down my excitement in my voice and uh, not tell him that I really, really wanted these and had been scouring the internet for one. Uh, but I said, you know, this is what I'm after. I'm a serious buyer. And I think we settled on 35 grand, which according to my database that I had built was the lowest price that one had transacted for to date. They were about $125,000 new, so wonderful depreciation. So I wired the guy money shortly before I called my wife and said, hey, honey, um, I bought a boat today. And she was actually okay with that because she knew it was something I'd wanted for a while and uh, that she'd be able to enjoy as well. Now the problem came with shipping it because how do you get a friggin' boat on a trailer from across the country? Well, I tried U-Ship and landed some guy who was going to pick it up and essentially just haul it behind his truck from across the country because that was the most cost-effective way of doing it. And he had insurance and great feedback and all that. Everything worked out great until he was about an hour from me. And he called and said, one of the tires exploded. I'm on the side of the road. Can you come help? Because I don't have whatever I need to put the spare tire on. I'm like, sure. Well, thankfully, two minutes later, one of these roadside rescue people had pulled up and they had everything they needed and changed the tire for him. So he said, don't worry about it. But I was already on my way. So I essentially met him like halfway between where he had broken down and my shop. One of the other tires now had essentially the belts had broken. So it was all deformed and it was about to explode. And I found out quickly that the Corvette Z06 wheels that were on it were not ideal because they required low profile passenger car tires, 
which can't handle the load and the bouncing of a trailer with no real suspension. So something the engineers didn't think about because they were planning for people to just park it next to the Corvette in their collection. I followed him back to the warehouse, just watching the tire go like this all the way the last half hour, driving about 35 miles an hour with our hazards on the highway. And we made it back. So the first thing I do is say, all right, I gotta get different wheels and tires for this because if I just buy new tires for the Corvette wheels, they're just gonna blow out over and over and over again. So I called the trailer manufacturer and said, hey, I have one of these custom trailers that you made, 50 of, I'd like to get wheels. And I was met with laughter. That being a dead end, I said, okay, how hard can this be? I need 17 inch trailer wheels, I can put tires on, and they, because they used actual Corvette hubs, it needs to be five by 120 or whatever the bolt pattern was. Well, turns out that doesn't exist in a trailer tire. I found one wheel in the country that had that bolt pattern and thankfully it was the correct size. So I ordered them, put tires on them, and now I have nice white steel wheels on the Corvette boat trailer, but they're functional. I serviced it before going to put it in the water and they say you should replace an impeller every year. Well, we pulled the impeller out and it was cracking and about to break and pretty sure it was the original one from 2008. So we put a new impeller in and changed the oil and did a few other things and took it out on the water. My dream was about to be realized. And I went to tie it up to the dock and realized there are no cleats on this boat. Nothing, nothing to which you can affix a rope or for that matter, an anchor or fenders or anything that boat people would use on a boat for boating type activities. I quickly realized that this boat was not designed to be motor boated. But when I got it out on the water, all was instantly forgotten because of the sound of the engine and the torque and how awesome it was to drive. 505 horsepower certainly did that boat a lot of favors and was a step up from my Chrysler 340 in my vintage century. And it was the first boat I experienced that had actual real torque that would, you could feel the acceleration coming out of the water. So that was fun, but then I had to install cleats. And then once I started using it more, I realized that there were a lot of things that were not really thought out in this boat. One of which was just stuffing that big engine behind the seats because it was impossible to work on impossible to access anything. You had to get special tools for everything. And finding even parts that I thought would be easy, when I called Malibu, they laughed at me. And essentially I had to cross-reference these parts because I'm like, well, most of them are probably Chevy parts, but they're stamped with Malibu part numbers. So I have to figure out, you know, what these parts are. So that became an adventure in and of itself. But thankfully, you know, it is, a Corvette engine, so it's relatively simple to work on and the parts do exist. I was getting pretty worried that I had bought the uh, water going equivalent of an obscure British car for a second. The other problem is that it has a black dash, and not only a black dash, but a black leather dash. And boats pretty much only get used in sunshine and it gets really hot out there. And all the rest of the upholstery is also leather. So it gets water stained and ridiculously hot all the time. And then the inside is carpeted. So anytime you get it wet, because that's kind of what you do in a boat is things get wet, it just stays wet. And so I have to like shock back it out and then run dehumidifiers after I use it in order to keep the boat, you know, not smelling like an old wet sock. It also has power windows the side windows that go up and down, which is great, except when one of them has any sort of pressure applied to them, which is kind of mandatory because there's a storage compartment up in front of the windshield that is really the only place to put life jackets and stuff. You have to crawl over the windshield, but not put any weight on it. So you have to do these gymnastics to get up there to get the life jackets out. And oh, by the way, don't get all the speakers and subwoofers wet that are in there because the stereo system is like the coupe de grace of this thing. It, at least, you know, when a Corvette collector is having a party in his Corvette collection and wants to show his boat off that's never been in the water. 
So, of course, when somebody leans on one of those, it comes off the track and you have to take the windshield out and the dashboard and the side cover. And it's about, I think I had 10 hours of labor into putting the window back on the track so that it would go up and down. I use my boat for water skiing because that's kind of what you do with a ski boat and pulling tubers and things like that. Well, both the driver and passenger seat face forward. So there's no rear facing seat for the spotter. There's also no mirror. You know, one of those things you'd think a ski boat would have, but it makes up for it by having heated seats. Cause you know, that's something you need in a boat. I, I will say the heated seats do come in handy and it does actually have heat, which is pretty awesome too, for those hot days when you're burning yourself on the leather upholstery. Storage is very limited because of course you have to have the engine in the back. Uh, but we managed to get all the toys in there and all of the requisite material for using a boat. It's a little bit of a headache. It's a love-hate relationship for sure. Um, but at the end of the day, every time I take it out, it reminds me of why I bought this boat. And not just because of all the attention I get. Certainly, it's kind of like owning a Ferrari in that you just get the most ridiculous questions ever. Like, how much did it cost you to build that sucker? That looks like a Corvette. Is that a Corvette? No, no, it just says Corvette on the side. That's cool. So yeah, I get a lot of questions, but it is incredibly fun to use. It does fantastic at endangering people's lives when I'm pulling them on the tube and possibly also on water skis. It's one of the best handling boats I've ever driven, uh, mostly because I've pretty much driven sailboats most of my life, but you can turn it on a dime and scare the people in the, the back seat and actually spray them with water. And it's loud enough. And uh, it's a lot of fun to use despite all of the things I had to overcome to make this boat actually usable as a boat. So every time I have to deal with it, I swear I'm going to sell it. And every time I actually use it, I say, I'm never going to sell this. This is the greatest boat ever. And in keeping with puns, I did finally name it although I can't uh, give full credit to naming it myself. Somebody else uh, gave me the inspiration for this and I named it C6. We'd like to thank Avalon King for their continued support of the VinWiki YouTube channel. I have their Armor Shield 9 ceramic coating on all my cars and I love it. The increased shine, the reflectivity, the ease of cleaning and the protection of the paint all make it a tremendous thing to add value and protection to your car. You can check it out at the link in the description below, and we're gonna to continue to experiment and do interesting projects like the S55, which hopefully at some point soon, will get to be shot off the cliff to see if it protects your car in the event of an accident. Oh, well, that's cute, Ed. I'm over here at Genus Garage with Avalon King building a V12 supercar from scratch. <laughs> yeah, we're way past ceramic coatings now, buddy. Okay, well, we'll hear more from Casey about the King Zero project later this month. But again, thank you to Avalon King for supporting the channel. Check them out in the link in the description below.